Right, it's time for another math easy solution here and discuss further into the first derivative test for finding local minimum and maximum and now look at an, a useful example on this uh, basically before I get to the example I want to quickly recap on the first derivative test which is basically goes like suppose that C is a critical number of a continuous function f remember in my earlier videos I showed critical number is basically whenever the derivative is zero or does not exist so make sure to watch that if you are not familiar with it. Anyways, basically, if you have C as a critical number, then if the derivative changes from positive to negative at C, then F has a local maximum at C. If the derivative changes from negative to positive at C, then, then F has a local minimum. But if it does not change sign at C, then you do not have a local max or minimum. And basically, here's the scenarios that went over last time. It, this is part a which is goes from positive to negative and this is a local max and this is a negative to positive local minimum and then here at this point it goes from positive goes to zero and goes positive so it's neither local min or max and in this case goes from negative it goes to zero then goes to negative again so it's still a uh, not a local max or min so now this is the example i am going to go over basically states find the local maximum and minimum values of the function g of x equals x plus sine x and here i forgot to mention this one basically for the domain of x is greater than zero and less than two pi yeah so basically now the first thing to do here is to find the critical numbers and then we would have to see if it's positive or negative the derivative on uh, to the left and right of the critical numbers basically in this case here we'll take the de the derivative so g prime of x is equal to well derivative of x is one plus derivative of two sine x that's just two cos x you see a proof of this in the video link below on trigonometry derivatives so basically we have this part here now we need to find critical numbers, so we set this equal to zero. And, and this is a continuous function, as you can see, because trig is continuous, this one is just a constant. So then it's going to be continuous, There's, then the critical numbers are only when derivative is zero, because it's going to exist everywhere, the derivative. So now we set it equal to zero. Solve for x, or in this case, cos x, is going to be equal to negative one over two. So basically, we need to find the x values that, e that cos of x equals to negative one over two because in this then then we'll have a derivative of zero so this is this is the case here and if you recall our exact trigonomic func functions or ratios if we go this is a cosine so it's going to be a one and no, now this is adjacent to our hypotenuse it's not the square root so basically one over two this part's going to be square root three so then this is going to be well this square root three is higher than one so an easy way of Remembering, uh, remembering which angle is in this one. This is going to be pi over 3 because this is basically 60 degrees, either 60 or 30. So we have pi over 3 here. Yeah, so with this pi over 3, we know that for using our exact trig ratios, we know cos of pi over 3 is equal to 1 over 2. But here we need uh, when it's equal to negative 1 over 2. So again, we could use either our SOCA TOA or, or whatever memory tool you, ha you have. I, I just like just graphing it from 0 to 2 pi right here. This is 2 pi. This is just cos of x. So we know that at 1 over 2, that is... Actually, I made a big mistake. This, this goes over there. There, that's my mistake there. This is 2 pi right there. And now to find out when it's going to be negative 1 over 2, we have to use this pi over 3 here. So pi over 3, th this is going to be pi over 2. No, so pi over 3 is going to be somewhere over here. So that's pi over 3, and this is going to be uh, roughly 1 over 2. So now we need to use just basically our uh, trigonomic uh, symmetry here. So we got to get from here to roughly 1 over 2 is over somewhere over here. And this is the same distance from here to here as it is from here. Yeah, basically from here to here as it is from here to here. So we got to find out what this value is, and we can do that easily. If we the, this is going to be our pi. I'll draw it here. This is pi right here. This is pi over three. And using our symmetry, this is the top, this is the bottom. This distance right here to here. This is pi over three. So to find out what this distance is, we just have to go subtract pi, which is this full length by pi over 3, so pi over minus pi over 3, multiplying the top and bottom by common denominator, 3 over 3, this equals 2, 2 pi over 3. 
So we have one, one of the numbers, and then the next one, as you can see, it continues on over to here. So then, and, and again, by our symmetry, this is going to be pi over 3 as well. So this distance is pi over 3, and now we can basically, yeah, basically from uh, getting this number across here, we'll just go pi plus pi over 3 instead of subtract. So to use a common number, 3 over 3 times pi, this is 4 pi over 3. So now we know that when cosine of x is equal to negative 1 over 2, x is equal to basically um, 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So these are our um, critical points. Yeah, now we could just make a table and then write the intervals out basically. We know that, so this is the critical points are here and here. So we have to look from uh, 0 up to the first critical point, which is, uh, is 2 pi over 3. So when x is greater than 0 and less than 2 pi over 3. And our next interval is basically from 2 pi over 3, less than x is less than now 4 pi over 3. And the last interval is from x is basically greater than pi, 4 pi over 3 and less than 2 pi, which is our end point of, of our domain. So now we look at this part here when we look at 1 plus 2 cos of x between this part, when we look at what this, if this is cos x, so basically anywhere from this point onwards, here's this point, because this is are gonna be negative one over two. So this point's always gonna be greater than uh, negative one over two, so an, anything greater than negative one over two, and then plus one, again, it's just, it's just gonna be yeah, it's going to be positive because we're going to have a greater number than negative 1 over 2 times 2. It's still going to be uh, the absolute value of that's going to be greater. Th yeah, it's going to be less than uh, the 1 if it's negative and positive. It doesn't matter. So it's going to be positive right here. And now this means that it's increasing. So if it's positive, increase, decrease test says this is increasing. The, the slope is increasing, so a g of x is increasing. Now in between here, in between here, as you can see here, our, G, our derivative is less than, um, I mean, cos of x is less than 1 over 2 here, and negative 1 over 2, so it's less than, less than negative 1 over 2. So if it's less than negative 1 over 2, this means that the derivative is less than 0. So, so this is going to be negative, and then we're going to be decreasing. And now when we look at the last part, because there was this derivative, 1 plus 2 cos x, and now when we look at between here 4 pi over 3 and and 2 pi that's gonna be on this side to be the same thing as the beginning one this is all greater than this uh, negative 1 over 2 so then greater than neg negative 1 over 2 times 2 plus 1 is gonna be positive and now we this is gonna be increasing and now based on our um, the first derivative test we know that this is going from positive to negative so it's gonna be something like in this case like this pause increasing then decreasing then this number right here which is 2 pi over which is the x value of 2 pi over 3 that's a local ma uh, maximum and in this case here it's decreasing and then increasing and then so then this point is a local uh, this is a local min and this is a local max right here and these are at the critical points. Uh, so basically, we'll write that down. So we have a local max at x equals 2, which is this one here, 2 pi over 3. And now we can plug this into g of x. So we want to know what it is. So basically, g of 2 pi over 3. If we scroll up, it's basically, this is going to be, scroll what g was, x plus 2 sine of x. So we plug that in. So we get now 2 pi over 3 plus 2 sine of 2 pi over 3. So now we know uh, 2 pi over 3 is to find out what this is. We Again, we look at our exact trig functions right here. We know that if this was pi over 3, we had like above, this is 1, 2, square root 3. So then sine of basically uh, pi over 3 is equal to opposite over adjacent, so square root 3 over 2. But then when we look at a graph of sine, it looks something like this, goes up like this, goes down. So then at uh, this part right here, square root 3 over 2, somewhere here. And then when we draw a uh, straight line, the next time it's square root 3 over 2. Actually, I, I, mean, uh, I mean, this is pi over 3 right here. 
So now we have to need to move to 2 pi over 3, and that's going to be, because this is pi over 2 right here, it's just going to be somewhere over here. So this is going to be our 3 pi, I mean 2 pi over 3. Just keep getting confused. So again, this is going to be over here. This is just to see if it's positive or negative. So then this is going to be po uh, positive. So we have sine of 2 pi over 3 is equal to plus square root 3 over 2. It's the exact same thing as this. So plug that in there. We'll get g of 2 pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi plus 2 times square root of 3 over 2. So this equals to 2 pi plus square root of 3. And if you plug this in the calculator, you get something like, yeah, 3.83 if you plug that in the calculator. So now the next part, we know that there's a local minimum at, at x equals the next critical number 4 pi over 3. And that's basically from over here. It's, it's decreasing then increasing, and this is at this point 4 pi over 3. So we could write this out there. So now plug this in, g of 4 pi over 3 equals 2. This is going to be 4 pi over 3. And now plus, uh, it's going to be plus 2 times sine of 4 pi over 3. Now when we look back to this one, again, we're going to use that same base, uh, tr exact trig ratio of pi over 3. So it's going to be, but now we're going to look it over here. So it's going to be square root 3 over 2, but we have to find out about if it's negative or positive. This, at this point here, this is our pi. So 4 pi over 3 is greater than it, and everything greater than it is going to be uh, negative. So it's, I think it's somewhere over here. So this is going to be negative right here. So we know sine, or it could be somewhere here, I'm not too sure, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be the same thing. So it's going to be 4 pi over 3 equals to negative square root 3 over 2. And, and once again, you could use a Soka Toa. You could use uh, basically, basically, you could use a unit circle. What I just like drawing it like this. Uh, for me, it's easier. So now we have this part. This is going to be now 4 pi over 3 minus now 2 times. This is going to cancel out. We're just going to get square root 3. So the 2's cancel out. And now we're going to be le left with this one. And this, if you plug this in the calculator, you should get 2.46 right here. So this is the local minimum. This is the local maximum. And these are at the critical numbers, these one over here. And here, if you graph the basically the function with Google Graph and calculators, you can see we have a local maximum at, at this point, r roughly over here. And this one is, uh, is about uh, yeah, basically 2 pi over divided by 3. That's close to 2 here. And, and also, as you can see, the, the local max is close. This is a 4 right here. So when it's just under 4, which is 3.83, so that's correct. And as you can see, the local maximum. And then at the far end here, you have 4 pi over 3, so it's going to be bigger than pi, which is 3.14, etc. So somewhere around here. And again, this is 2.46. And as you can see, it is pretty much close to 2.46 over there. And this is a local minimum. And this just proves that this is at least uh, correct or should be correct. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned from this video. Uh, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.